go live hi you guys so we are streaming live and welcome to another self-love conversation this is gloria ward and i'm the founder of the i'm loving me project where we inspire your women just like you everybody who is watching to live your highest and truest self and y'all know me i'm I can be considered to be your best girlfriend who will tell you all the things that you need to know to go ahead and start to love yourself and also bring you some fabulous women who have started on that journey, who've been on that journey, got a t-shirt, all that stuff. And tonight we have a Virginia native. Is that true? Yes. Yes, it yeah, is. Victoria Michelle who is an author of the blog, Pieces of Me, and a co-founder of the Related and Release Facebook group. She's a mother of two beautiful children and a United States Army veteran, which thank you so much, who served for you. years, and she currently resides in Waldorf, Maryland. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, she actually uh, wrote an article on our blog about three tips to help you heal uh, your heart and your family when you transition into a divorce. So, Tori, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yes. So let's go ahead and, 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 and jump right into it. Like, I would like to know, you know, the story. How, you know, how did you get from where you are now to, you know, this point where you actually giving out advice for divorce? What What's the story? What happened? Um, it wasn't until I actually was with my divorce, I was forced out of my home. Um, forced by my out. ex, what do you mean, forced, forced out, child, forced out? So he had already moved to Maryland. Yeah. Um, but in, me and my children were still staying in the house, and he told us, um, hey, I'm coming back and I'm bringing my friend with me, whether y'all stay there or not. And so at this point, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Okay. I'm and sorry. I'm the, okay. And okay. I don't, let's just put it like this. I, he, I was introduced to her as the nanny. So I don't know, you know, okay, girl, go ahead. This is, we just, <laughs> we just trying to flesh out the story. Sorry. Right. You know, you ain't going to so, tell me you coming with no, no nanny. With a friend. Wow. Okay. With a friend. With a friend. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, we're so gonna start we over. Okay, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so from that point, I had to make the decision. Um, me and my kids, or do I want to let them see me going through all this back and forth? So I say we picked up and we moved to an apartment. Um, at that point, I realized they are the ones looking at me. Like I have to do this for them. Mm -hmm. Um, my faith in God became stronger because there was a whole child support battle that I didn't want to deal with. There was so many, like, he, he, there was no communication between us. He absolutely did not want to talk to me. It, it was just so difficult. So at this point, I'm like, I got to lean on somebody. And the only person I know is not going to fail me is God. From there, I prayed daily. I fasted. I cut off social media. I cut off it's just everything that I thought was pouring negatively into me had to go. Right. Well, I would say, I, I would want to know, because like I told you earlier, before we got started, I'm, I'm a woman who's divorced. Mm -hmm. And I know that sinking feeling. The mm -hmm. first thing that you feel, Tori, is that shock and denial that this is even going to happen because we didn't have any kids, right? Right. But because you are looking at how your life is about to change upside down and it is so fearful because you 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 telling yourself like what am I gonna do I was telling myself okay with the, the you know what 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 I gotta do I gotta go find a place I gotta you mm -hmm. know my money I gotta do all this when you were in that period what did that feel like because see there's a woman right now who might be going through that that got all these funny feelings going on I felt it that right there felt um have you do you have you slept with a weighted blanket? Yeah. Yes, that's exactly what it felt like. Like I had like three or four weighted blankets on me. I was confused, I was lost, I was angry, um, I was helpless, hopeless. I felt everything that depression is, and, and plus I have PTSD, I have depression, and I have anxiety. 
all of that was on me. And I'm going to be honest, I thought I wasn't going to make it. I knew, I thought, I knew I wasn't going to make it. Right. That's that's what it felt like. I just, like a whole bunch of weight lift on, on me. But what was the weight though? Was the weight the sadness? No. Or was the weight the fact that you were surprised or the was the weight was that you was disappointed? Because sometimes we look and we say, like, even in my marriage, I kind mm-hmm. of knew, but I just thought that it you know what I'm saying? Like you just right. like work it out and everything. But then for when me, it actually happens, you like, damn, <laughs> you know, for, for me, my weight was fear. It was mm. fear. I, I had come to the I had already went through the motions of, oh, I'm getting divorced. Um, I have already went through the motions of me being sad. But once the paper was signed and I got it and now. I got to move on. Fear was my weight. Like, I can't do this. I'm not the breadwinner. I'm I'm not. Yeah, this. No. Now I have to start step out on, on faith. <laughs> faith over fear. Definitely. So it was my weight was fear. Yeah. I remember when I got my papers. Um, I, well, we had separated first. OK. That's so I did. got my apartment and all that stuff or whatever. And it was just like, hey, I'm coming over because I need to drop off something to you. And he dropped off the folder and inside the folder, you know how they got the little uh, affidavit uh-huh. of <laughs> oh, <laughs> the divorce yeah. and all that. And then you looking at it and you like, what this mother put in here? You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I was the pictures, make sure ain't nothing changed. <laughs> You've gone through the whole thing. And yes. you're looking and you like, uh-uh, uh-uh. And, and, and it was just like, you want to go ahead and sign it? And I'm like, no, I need to get somebody to look at this. And it's like, right, right. what do you mean you got to get somebody to look at it? Because see, I don't know what my options are. You know, now, exactly. you, get, now you get angry. It's like, mm-hmm. I tell the women all the time, Tori, when, when, you are, when you are breaking up, what you're doing is you are deciding to start a new life. Now, you mm-hmm, also absolutely. had kids. So how was that with kids and 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 getting them to understand that you guys were divorcing? How was that? Um, so at the time, what were they? They were young. Mm-hmm. Um, they knew that we were separating. But what I did, I had to talk to them like they were human, like people. You can't get Um, I had to have open conversations. So it might sound like an adult conversation, but I broke it down to where, you know, a four-year-old and a five-year-old could understand or a three-year-old and a four-year-old. And I honestly, I told my children, and I recommend this for anybody, ask them, how do you feel? Yes. That was the biggest thing. And they told me, I'm mad because we don't live here. I'm sad because I don't. And when I knew their emotions, then I knew how to deal with their emotions. But I just can't be like, okay, well, it's a divorce. We're done. Right. Deal with it. So that was one of the things. Open communication with the children definitely helped us. And do you feel like because the kids have their own emotions and you have to take into consideration how they feel, now you really have to compromise with this person because now you're thinking, you know, I have to find some way of having a relationship with you because I don't want the kids to think that it's mommy who is stopping this or angry Absolutely. all of that, you know? Uh, right. For for that, um, I will honestly say it's him who, who doesn't want the relationship with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've always told him, hey, it's open communication. I don't care what's going on in my personal life, but we have to co-parent. Um, unfortunately, he decided to not co-parent he just wants to be done and i had to have that hard conversation like mommy did this and daddy did not want to do this you were able to call him but i always kept it open so that they will understand it's not just me but we made these decisions together Mm -hmm. and so is it how how has they how has it been for them are they have they healed or start their journey of healing or Um, there's still a battle they're healing. Um, I recommend this as well. I'm putting them in. I'm putting them in counseling because Tell even me. though me, 
I'm I'm in this situation, so they know mommy knows a lot. But if they talk, if they can talk to an, uh, another adult or a counselor, have at it because I want you to be able to heal the same way I, as an adult, know how to heal. Mm-hmm. So they are they're good. Um, and plus, I have my fiance now, who they call daddy, so they have a man in their life. It's me. Let's get in there. <laughs> Wait a minute. Come on. <laughs> Okay, look at God. Now let's right. get to that part. Okay, so now <laughs> right. we out that picture, right? Right. And now we done transform and we got here. And mm-hmm. and the question is for you to be in a relationship now and have a fiance, do you believe that you truly healed or are you still on a journey? Because sometimes we fall into other things where mm-hmm. we think that now. Uh, you know, it's like that phrase, you know, to get over somebody else, you just get under someone else kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. no, 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 <laughs> no. I let myself go through all the phases that I needed to go through. I was, like I said, I was angry. I was hurt. I did all of my healing. I was making sure I was comfortable with being single, comfortable with being by myself, who I am and, and know, okay, look, this time when you do it, you you can't lose Tori. And so I, you know, I dated and stuff, but I, w- I wasn't serious. But I hadn't dated in six years. So I was just like, let me go have fun. And then once all that was done, now I'm okay. Let's let's be serious. Let's get into a relationship. <laughs> Girl, I know. <laughs> I said, look, I, 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 I'm telling you, I'm on, that, I'm on that dating journey right now. And I just shared with our platform that I went on a date on Saturday and girl I had the lashes on too they know I had the lashes <laughs> flying in the wind girl, <laughs> in the wind. You girl. Ready. and I get on a date and, and I bombed I asked him so many questions I asked him all this and he was like huh are you in a whole interview <laughs> because when you get to this point and 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 that's what I was trying to tell the ladies and you would understand when you get to this point it's like you don't want to play around it's like if I'm if I'm back out here I already did the fun thing right where I didn't care and I was out and drinking and having fun and doing all that and now if I'm considering somebody I need to I need to roll down all Run it down. You know? <laughs> I need to make sure that you are who you are. But at the same time, like I was telling them, I wasn't giving the brother a chance to breathe because I was pushing my agenda right. that I wanted, not realizing that I was really telling myself, like this ain't gonna happen to me again. So I'm gonna go ahead not and roll all. down all this stuff. And yep. if you ain't got all these check marks, then guess what? You know, that's it. But the you later. Yep. I, girl, he felt all that and I ain't get a call yet. Like I told you, so <laughs> that ain't work out. Try, so, try anyway, later. So, so tell us how you got yours. <laughs> Honestly, like I would I tell people all the time, online dating is like, no, get to your fiance online. Me. So mm-hmm. <laughs> online, uh, we met online. And he went through the same thing I went through. He was previously married. He did all his extra stuff. And now he's both of us looking at each other like, okay, we're done. So what are we going to do? Um, he lived in Maryland. I live in Fredericksburg. We did a long distance relationship for about a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Then he popped the question and we moved to Maryland <laughs> and we blended families. Yes. We actually planned the wedding during quarantine. Yeah. We're getting married in October. So that was a, we interviewed, I will say that we, mm-hmm. we interviewed each other. It was, but it was a push pull type thing. Right. You know, I didn't, I just didn't run down my questions, but we asked certain questions. And one of the big things I would tell people is if you have children, everybody's like, well, I want to wait and wait and wait. But if you are serious and you want to date someone and you know you're dating for marriage, they have to like your children. There's no point in getting into a relationship with somebody for six, eight months, and then you find out, oh, they don't like your children, or better, your children don't like them. Now right. you don't wait to your life. Right. I was going to ask that, too, because the, the person I was dating previously had children. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, he was divorced. I was divorced. But his kids are a little bit older. 
but mm-hmm. it was just like you know I'm like hey everybody they like mm. <laughs> you know <laughs> you ain't my mama <laughs> You know, and it's just like, you know how they give you the church hug and, you know, go do all that. And, you know, I don't have any kids, so I don't have no experience with that. So I'm up there like, well, I, you know, I guess it, this is what it is. But how did your kids react? Like, was it, you know, a cold shoulder in the beginning or did they, you know? Um, well, they, we planned our, our, uh, our first meet. So we would FaceTime, like I said, we were long distance, so we would FaceTime. So the kids would come by and kind of look and like, oh, mommy, who is that? And then his son would do the same thing and, you know, bounce around in the back, like, look. And so finally we introduced on FaceTime first and kind of got that feel, you know, and they got to talk to him a little bit. So by the time they met him, they were like, oh, hey, you know, um, I think maybe like two weeks. No, I'm going to say like three weeks when they came to Virginia. My daughter asked, she said, well, can I call him Dexter Daddy? And I'm like, oh. Dexter Daddy. Ooh. Like, I'll be, hey. And so I asked him, he said, you know, because she asked, you know, and I didn't force anything on her. Obviously, she felt something that was there. And ever since then, it's been Dexter Daddy, and now it's just Daddy. So, but they, it was, it was no cold shoulder. They were, they were very welcoming to each other, to all the, to other kids, and then to him as well. And are you still trying to balance the relationship with their father and everything? Or has no, okay. he's he's quit. He said he doesn't uh, want anything to do, you know, with us anymore. So unfortunately, I say unfortunately, but it kind of could go both ways because that negativity is a lot. Because I don't, I can't control going over at his house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So unfortunately, he did say no. But then it, there's a blessing in the storm because they have a father here that loves them. Absolutely. And and that's the and that's the then that's the blessing within it all, you know, where you thought and and that's the whole point of this conversation. You thought and 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 fought and got angry over a life that you thought you was gonna have forever. You know, where God was showing you the whole time that this is not right for you, trust Mm. me. I'm telling you something better is a, is on the way, even though mm. it hurts, even though you were going to go through some things, but I need you to discover who you are so I can Ooh. set you up for the next one, right? This, because this is not it. Exactly. Right. And that this, is so hard to process when you in it, right? Right. Absolutely. Because you, Absolutely. Because you say to yourself, you say saying to yourself, damn. I don't want to be somebody who's divorced. I don't want to start over. I don't want to do this. Absolutely. But it's like you tell, you know, the ladies, you got to be able to have faith and trust. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. When right? I tell you, I, this, my actual story, if I could tell you the entire story, for example, the child support case, I gave him options to do say hey you know you can have this low amount of money no Mm -hmm. he said this amount of money he said okay i'll do that but he still didn't do it and then god sat there and said watch i'm gonna gonna show you something we got in the courtroom and i'm like oh i was way off like you know so it's just that you have to stand on faith stand in faith and it's just because that fear will take over and you will be stuck like all, all through my journey, I started school. I got a new job. I got a place. I I just bought a new car. Like God is like, okay, you finally doing what I'm telling you to do. Let me show you what happens when you follow me. And I'm like, okay, well maybe maybe you want to some God, baby. <laughs> yes, because and now you're 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 becoming the person that God has created you to Absolutely. be. Right? Absolutely, right? And it's like you know, this person blessed you with your wonderful children and everything, but that was probably his only job, right? Absolutely. And so now here you are, you learn more about yourself, you loving yourself more, and people can see that on the outside. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. You see that on the outside. And it, and it is such a beautiful thing when you do see it, because now you're saying to yourself, when you look back, 
what the hell was I doing? <laughs> you know, like, what was she? Why was I, yeah, why was I trying to hold on to that where I always felt, and we always do when we're in the marriage, mm -hmm. we always feel in our gut that something ain't right. Ooh. Right? I felt it multiple times, but you don't want to leave but because you don't want to leave because you think, you know. Maybe you can what work was it? through it. it work out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because nobody tells you about how important it is for you to choose yourself first, to love mm. yourself first. You know, I think a lot of people take the when they say two become one, mm -hmm. they take the like you are one, but you still have to be yourself. I had no idea who I was in my marriage. I didn't know, but once I got divorced, I'm like. Oh wait, I like to do this. Oh, oh no, I, yeah. it was so much, it's so life changing and eye opening. Like, okay, wow. Like, hey, Tori, I hadn't seen you in a while. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. And then even when you're on your journey where you're having fun, that's where you discover what you like and what you don't right. like. Right. You know, so it's all a process. And like I tell the ladies, when you're going through a difficult time and, and, you're, and you're deciding if you're going to stay in your marriage or you are afraid, you have to be able to understand if that nudging is getting worse in your stomach mm -hmm. and, it, and it starts with a tap and now you're getting punched in the gut, yeah. you've got to be able to allow God to do his work, even that, if you don't like so it. True. Absolutely. Because one thing someone always told me is you will, when it's time for you to get uncomfortable and God starts making you uncomfortable, go ahead. Because something bigger is coming. But if you just stand and being comfortable and whatever, you can't catch that blessing. He's not going, you, you got to be uncomfortable to grow. Like, and that's one thing I've always stuck with me now. Like, oh, Tori, you're getting complacent. You're comfortable. Yep. We'll be, we'll be yep. switching up. We'll be doing. Yeah. So, here I am now. <laughs> oh my God. And what do we have going on? Tell us about the blog and a Facebook group, how we follow you, everything. Yes. So my blog is called um, The Pieces of Me. Um, and I have on Instagram, it's the pieces of me underscore blog. Um, and I just post quotes and motivational things throughout there. Um, I've taken a small step back from the blog because of my wedding that I'm planning, but I will be back. In October, uh -huh. um, so you can definitely follow uh, the pieces of me underscore blog um, on Instagram. If you want to follow my personal page, is underscore catch my vibes at seventeen. Um, catch underscore catch my vibes seventeen, mm -hmm. and for my Facebook group with my friend um, and sister Jamie Moore, you can look up relate and release, and that's just a a mindfulness a, a, a sisterhood group that we just have many different women coming in and having a place, you know, just talk. So. Sure. And, and, that, and that's what's needed. And I, I really enjoyed this conversation and interviewing you because <laughs> you know, you. I think it's so practical that even if you are not married and you're in a relationship with someone, knowing that it is vital that you choose yourself, that you, really look at the situation and you say, is it really good for me? Absolutely. Don't, Absolutely. don't, the fear and everything is normal. Mm -hmm. Not being able to let go is normal. But at the end of the day, God is going to do what he want to do because you have to be able to understand and know that whatever he created you to do is going to happen. Rook, I don't care how you think you're going to get to it. You're going to get to it. That's right. You're going to get to it. You're either going to get dragged or you're going to walk. Right. Right? <laughs> yeah, you're going to get there. You will get there. Yes, That's absolutely. right. But I love your story, too, because you, there's always a, a point where you can find love again. Yes. And love is not only just one straight and narrow path. There are plenty of people out there, Absolutely. you know, who, who are good people who are looking for love. So when they plant it in your mind that this is it and you can't get nobody else and they talk all that negative talk, it is 100% not true. A lie, a complete lie, a complete lie. I, I definitely, I definitely agree because I was one of those people who was like, okay, well, I'm one and done. Like, this is it. 
But again, God was like, let me show you how to love yourself first. So that's mm. someone else of you. And once I started loving myself, then I was like, oh, wait, like, I'm worthy of love. Like, wait that's a minute. Right, girl. That is so me. Like, it's, right. Yes. And he didn't break me. That's why I keep telling myself, just you can't break me. So I'm going to get stronger. Mm -hmm. You ain't break me. You allowed me to see who I was. Absolutely. You allowed me to go ahead and grow to the point where the person that's in front of me now knows the true me. Mm -hmm. Knows and the love me. me and love me. <laughs> yes. Everything. Everything. You know? And that's what it's about. So, Tori, thank you so much for being here. Give out your social media one more time for everyone. And, yes, ma'am. Uh, and let us know. Okay. My uh, Instagram is the, the pieces of me underscore blog. And my personal is underscore my vibe 17. And then you can also follow me on Relate and Release at, on Facebook as well. All right, guys. Thank you. Tori for this wonderful interview we have Thank one you. more coming up guys uh right behind this one in exactly two minutes but definitely follow her join her group you know and 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 especially if you're in relationships and and you are married and get those tips get those things that you need in order for you to make those good decisions about where you're going with your life so tori thank, thank you so you. much and yeah thank let's talk you. again for real of course, of course you just let me know i'm always available <laughs> all right talk soon all right bye, all right, bye.